Hello there, Reject Nation. I'm Greg Alba. I'm John Humphrey. We are going to react to the Oscar nomination list. Because of the way the media works, I'm well aware of at least one nomination. <laughs> Hence, the pandering beanie right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Black Panther Best Director Ryan Coogler has been nominated. That's right, he has. Chadwick Boseman for Best Leading Actor. Yeah, Best Screenplay Adapted and Original. Michael yeah. B. Jordan for Best Supporting Actress. I am so excited to look at this list because, um, you know, articles always lead with some nominations. So I saw that one right. That was the first one I saw. Black yeah, Panther nominated <laughs> for uh, Best Ensemble and Popular Category. Anywho, let's uh, let's get this show on the road and see what we got here. We got here. We got here. We got here. Okay, okay. Uh, let's just go with the big ones. <laughs> Best picture. Let's do this. <laughs> it's right here. Yeah. What do we got? A lot of B movies. Black Klansman. I love that so movie. I think that was in my top ten. Or did I swap that with I Black think you Panther? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Black Klansman was an amazing film. Awesome to hear. Awesome to hear. Black Panther, it's not gonna win, but I'm glad it's nominated. <laughs> you know? It's nice to have it in the bunch. <laughs> if honestly, if that wins, I'll be very surprised. I'd be I'd be very much surprised. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I probably would be too. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's the Avengers reassembling or whatever they're saying I <laughs> the mean, Oscars. I, I like the uh, Black Panther movie quite a bit. I feel like if the Oscars give it to Black Panther, then it will be a confirmation that they truly do want to satisfy the public. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, John, why don't you stop thinking with your white man mentality and oh, realize that it's the best movie of the year? Uh, sure. Jeez. Why not? <laughs> Actually, my favorite movie of the year is a movie featuring many white people. Star is born. Bohemian Rhapsody. Yay. I take back every criticism I've ever given about that movie <laughs> and the shock I had at the Golden Globes. I, I am so happy, and I hope this stands a chance. The Favorite is a movie that I will always intend on watching and probably never get around to, honestly speaking. I'm really hoping I can I can squeeze it in. Yeah, well, we'll see. Green Book. Um, yay. Racism is wrong. Yeah. And Black Klansman, similar message. <laughs> probably in a more in-your-face package. <laughs> Which one? Uh, Black Klansman. You haven't seen it, John. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I could be mistaken. It could be the most low-key, mellow film of the year, I guess. It's saying the KKK's wrong. Roma. I watched that last night for the first time, people. Just last night. Um, for the first time? Yeah, the feel-good movie of the year right there. Oh, it seems like wow. Just, it's rare when you can get a movie nowadays that blends comedy and action all into one. A little too much CGI in its epic finale, but great setup for a franchise of this made. Oh, yeah. Well, um, Spike Lee, Spike Jones, Spike Lee directed the shit out of that movie. He did. He did. Both of them did. I never, I didn't <laughs> think Spike Jones and Spike Lee could bring together the authenticity of what it's like being a maid in Mexico in the 70s so well. I know. Um, but they pulled it off, man. Uh, that was that was one hell of an, an entertaining that's a, film. That's a dream matchup right there. I'm glad it worked out. And uh, yeah, Tears of Joy, beginning to end. A Star is Born. Mm. Um, uh, 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 or as I call it, a star is snubbed. Yeah, that's, hey, that's the talk of stars born everywhere. I mean, you never know. Maybe the Oscars will turn it around and do exactly what the Golden Globes didn't, which is award a star is born for stuff. Yes, yeah. <laughs> except for song. I, I got to imagine it'll probably still take song. I actually intended on watching Vice last night, but it's not out yet on uh, on Amazon or streaming or anything like that. Uh oh. So instead, I went with Roma. But I can t from j just if you watch the, I didn't see a trailer for Roma, but I did see a trailer for Vice. Mm -hmm. And after watching the trailer for Vice, I can certainly tell you Roma is probably twice as energetic <laughs> as anything Vice has to offer. Yeah, Adam McKay is usually a pretty low key director. Pretty too. low key. Best Speaking director. Of directors. Alfonso Cuarón directed Roma. Oh, that's who directed Roma. I'm sorry, it wasn't a pair of spikes. My bad. Uh, I should know that. I watched the. 
the comedy last Did night. You watch, <laughs> yeah, or Roma. You know what they should give awards for is best credits that maybe we would all watch and yeah, catch those names. Well, honestly, Roma has the longest opening credits you will ever uh, see. <laughs> oh boy, that's what I'm really looking forward to. You know how much I love credits. The favorite. Oh, Yorgos Lanthimos. What a name. Black Greek. Klansman. And <laughs> Spike Lee. You know, I didn't really like the way he directed Black Klansman, that's for sure. Adam McKay, Vice. That makes sense. What the Pavel, hell is Cold War? Pavel Pavlikowski. Have you heard of huh? Cold War? I've heard of Cold War. I don't know much of anything about it, but I remember the, the week most... it came out and it was on really? the Rotten Tomatoes coming this week. <laughs> so... I haven't heard of this. Yeah. Wow. Um... No. It's cool that they this is the, put us... This is the only sincere part of the video. Yeah, <laughs> like, what the it, fuck is this movie? <laughs> I'm always kind of happy when they put in somebody you wouldn't expect, I guess. For And and you know what that tells me is that that must be a pretty uh, solidly directed movie because the rest of these have something else to write yeah. on besides just the movie. Not, not to take away from them, but you know, it's like Vice hasn't gotten the most unanimous praise even though Adam McKay is directed and he's probably got a pretty distinct style. So I feel like Cold War probably earned its way into this category pretty hard. Sure, <laughs> sure, perhaps. Guess. <laughs> I'm always fascinated by movies that have uh, major consideration for, like, this is pr like this is one of the top considerations for what could potentially win Best Picture. Mm -hmm. I feel like A Star is Born is one of the talks. And uh, Bradley Cooper's not on this list for best director. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I that is my favorite directed movie of the year. And I forgot to mention at the top of this video, that was the other article I saw the headline for. <laughs> Bradley Cooper snubbed. <laughs> you know. <laughs> for, for, for it could be for the acting award, though. You never know. I knew it would be for director. I actually don't know who the best actor or actress nominations are. Well, no, I don't let's, know any of that. Here we go. Best actress. Yelitsa Aparicio. Roma. Like I said, man, uh, it's good that an action leading role is finally getting its due. The Wife was the other movie I was Fine looking close. for last night. Uh, yeah. I really want to watch that. I feel like at this point, it's a tight. You know, based off the amount of love that Roma is getting, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if Yelitsa actually won the award. She and she's, I'm sincerely, she's amazing in that movie. She really is. Yeah. I've heard that. That is like, uh, feel sorry for me, the movie. <laughs> yeah. no, I, I really did feel like, man, it, well, it's just such an, it's so like subtly authentic from yeah. beginning to end. Uh, Olivia Coleman, the favorite. Lady Gaga, of course, Star is Born. I mean, props to Olivia Coleman, though, because she has been holding it down in so many like character parts that you've seen in so many British flicks and shows over time that like I'm glad to see her getting a lot of recognition for this particular role and she's actually one of the main reasons I want to see that movie because she's really great across drama comedy whatever so I'm just I'm thrilled for her all right John well yeah. I you got you got the Coleman fan base down there yeah man. Lady Gaga yeah uh yeah I love her music Melissa McCarthy <laughs> for can you ever forgive me you know, with this performance and the Happy Time Murders in the same year, she's killing it right Dude, now. Dude, they should just nominate her for both of those movies in this one category. I really feel like, you know, Lady Gaga is probably the one that the audiences are like, win! Um, but I feel like it's probably going to be a pretty tight race between Glenn and Yalitza. Yeah, I mean, especially after the Golden Globes and everybody being surprised. Yeah. Best actor, look out. Christian Bale for Vice. Yeah. Bradley Cooper for A Star is Born. They, unsnubbed. Unsnubbed. It's, <laughs> uh, it's rede redeemed. That's cool. You know, they were in uh, A Place Beyond the Pines together and uh, shared a lot of screen time in that movie. And now they're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with one another. And uh, Christian Bale is definitely going to win that one. <laughs> Willem Dafoe at <laughs> Eternity's Gate. I, I have not seen a single clip or trailer for that movie. I just hear great things. <laughs> yeah, it's Willem Dafoe, man. Yeah. Rami Malek. Oh, this is that's the audience one right there. That's the one everyone wants to win yeah. right there. I feel like Christian Bale could edge this category out at the Oscars, maybe, but, you know, I, it's hard to argue Rami Malek. I feel like Christian Bale will win. I kind of get that sense, yeah. I, I really do. Um, I, 
I mean, to me, it's like, okay, it's a tie roots between Rami Malek and Christian Bale, but yeah. come on. It's like, I, I really feel like Christian Bale will be the one who wins. Yeah. V- Vigo. Vigo, I'm, I'm actually really glad his performance is getting a lot of recognition yeah. because it's so different than anything I've seen Vigo Mortensen yeah. do. He's very charming. I mean, he definitely <laughs> left it, I, even as much as I don't love that movie as much as the Golden Globes did, I thought he left a huge impression on me from that film. Well, he's so funny in that movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's so charming. <laughs> Yeah. And he's he slips effortlessly into that role, and yeah, after seeing him play so many other more broad things, to see him play yeah. a guy who almost just feels real, and <laughs> under the hands of a different director, it would have been an over the top performance. But he, he I, feel, is, I feel like him and Fairley really knew the tone. Yeah, which yeah. is funny considering you know so much of Peter Fairley's other work is broad comedy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. best supporting actress, Amy Adams for Vice. Hell yeah. Uh, Marina Tavira Roma. Oh, she is good. Uh, Regina King. Ooh, I feel like Regina King probably has the best shot here. It's possible, I really do. Yeah, I mean, the problem is you got two favorites in this category. We'll probably cancel each other out with Emma Stone and Rachel Weiss. Uh huh. And uh, and yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like Regina King probably stands a solid chance. I mean, like people, everybody loves Amy Adams, but I haven't heard like specifics about her in this movie. And uh, I feel like yeah. The lead in Roma will probably be the one who. All right. Uh, well, best supporting actor right here. We got Mahershala Ali. Mahershala Ali, who is gr- oh, thank God, Adam Driver is getting yeah. recognition for that. It sucks for the <laughs> a Washington actor. As, yeah, as Isaiah Isaiah Washington. Washington. Okay, so as I was putting inserts in this video, I realized that for the star of Black Klansman, we said the name Isaiah Washington. And actually, uh, we're we're gonna just keep it that way. You know, we're gonna nominate the white guy for Black Lives Matter. That's, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I've heard he's quite good. Well, I I will uh, admit though, like as great as I thought Isaiah Washington was in Black Klansman, the guy who got like the most emotional range to demonstrate in Black Klansman was Adam Driver. So okay. that okay. does make sense. Sam Elliott for a Star Is Born. Woo! Ooh, they, yeah. they redeemed that snub at the Golden yeah. Globes. <laughs> That's what we all really were hoping for, is that Sam Elliott would get mm. recognized for his work in that movie. Richard E. Grant, Can You Ever Forgive Me? If you win that Oscar. No idea what that is. Sam Rockwell for Vice. I've heard he is really good in that movie. Let's move on. Best original screenplay. The favorite. The favorite, you know... Oscars love their political dramas. Uh, uh, favorite. Yeah, that's what that is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pure old period piece. But I've also heard it's like wild and it's about them all kind of behaving poorly and it's not the political drama really? you would expect it to be. Yeah. I really? mean like it is, but it also isn't. Yeah, we'll see, John. Maybe that's one of your like filmmaker friends saying film things. Sure. Just keep it real. That's right. I'm sorry. <laughs> First Reformed, funniest movie of the year, Paul Schrader, which is that one movie that I fear I won't see, but I hear is amazing. Mm. Green Book, Roma, Vice. Is Vice really, like, that's based on a life and probably several biographies. I mean, I feel like the Roma movie is so much in its, more of its direction and editing and all the technical stuff. Mm-hmm. It's just such a super quiet film. <laughs> but maybe those are the most impressive writing jobs because it's all action. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Vice Radden McKay, yeah, he's got them dialogue. Best adapted screenplay, A Star is Born. Um, you know, I was thinking about it. The, the fact that A Star is Born is the fourth version is probably a thing that is a slight hindrance towards consideration for it. Yeah. Even though it's so different than the other ones in in a lot of ways like more ways than one um it i feel like there is a slight hindrance towards it because of that well yeah i mean it's basically you can easily argue we've seen this story several other times even though it is different it's like the earmarks the arc is the same concept and so yeah i'm sure that there are a lot of people who are like oh you know there there are other movies we can talk about (laughs) Damn, look at Netflix killing it. The Battle Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Good for them. You expect the Coens to get nominated. Beale Street could talk. Makes sense. Never heard of Can You Ever Forgive Me. It's the most Apparently, I got, a, Ford I got it. Oh, that's the one. Yeah. <laughs> My bad. I, I I know the image of Melissa McCarthy yeah. better than I know the title of that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I've heard it. Hey, I've heard that was uh, pretty good, too. 
I don't think it'll win this category, be. but uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I root for her when she uh, changes it up. Best makeup and hair. There's Uh-oh. only three movies nominated. Yeah, that always confuses me when they do this because there are enough movies with solid makeup and hairstyling this, to nominate at least five. This is when you throw your comic book shit in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where's Black Panther? <laughs> That's true. It's crazy how Black Panther's got a best picture nod. And yet... It's a very makeup and hair and heavy movie. so much makeup and hair. <laughs> Both on a sci-fi level and on just a naturalistic well, and they, cultural yeah, level. Yeah, they had like, a lot of practical designs with bringing the culture to life in that movie. I'm, I actually am pretty surprised it's not in here. Yeah. Maybe those Why are there only costumes? three movies? Yeah, I, I, I don't get when that happened. I just I can't imagine there are only three movies where makeup and hairstyling were notable this year. I just it seems Shit. so weird. I haven't even seen Destroyer, but the makeup on freaking Nicole Kidman's face. I'm yeah. Like, and that's that nomination. And, and even though that's not flashy as much as, you know, like an alien is or something like that, that's still impressive makeup work and arguably the stuff that you don't notice as well that's more naturalistic yeah. is kind of more impressive in ways. I'm actually pretty so. surprised. You would think that, like, when you look at the best picture nods, you would think that yeah. at least Black Panther would get a nomination for it. Yeah, or something. It seems like they just burned two spots in that category. What the hell's up with that? Best costume design. Okay, well, Black Panther's here. That, that makes sense. But there's still general. plenty of, like, makeup aesthetic in that movie. Um, yeah. The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Okay, yeah, that makes Western. Yeah. The Favorite. Obviously, that's yeah. the most obvious of them all. That is it. It's costume <laughs> yeah. in the name of the genre. <laughs> Queen of Scots, obviously. Yeah. Mary Poppins Returns. Ob- See, like I'm not, a, I'm not opposed to the obvious one no. because clearly they deserve yeah. it. Yeah, and, yeah, and to me, I'm like, there's so much makeup in Black Panther. Anyway, oh whatever. Cinematography, Roma. best cinematography. Roma better be here. Roma is definitely here. Oh dang, he shot it himself. Yeah. A Star is Born, <laughs> but not directing. <laughs> okay. Uh, Cold War. Oh. I gotta look up what this Cold War movie is. Yeah. Never Look Away. What is it? There are movies here I haven't heard of. Caleb Deschanel. Is that the father of Zoe Deschanel, I believe? Maybe. He's his famous cinematographer, so I gotta imagine. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, it. You could see his his great work through his daughter. Oh, totally! All that camera that she is. <laughs> Best original song, Kendrick Lamar. You finally got your nomination. If uh, I, I, okay, well, t- to me, okay, you got what? Uh, R B G. All right, Mary Poppins Ginsburg. Returns. The Star is Born, but I, it, it, to me, it's got to be a shallow oh, yeah, or all this. I feel like they would just pull that. <laughs> all the stars yeah um because it would that would be their way of giving black panther or something <laughs> or the costume design but i I've, really feel like they're gonna go with period piece for the costume design and uh, i feel like they always go with period piece and i and i i wonder if this will be the time where they take an easy one where they're like oh this is the easiest way to make a woke choice at this year's oscars is you what, know, is uh, to costume stars? design. Oh, costume design for Black Panther? No, I feel like this is the one place this, A Star is Born really has the the contention, you know? You think it's, so? Yeah, I mean, people really like all the stars and stuff like that, but I, I don't know. The Black Panther soundtrack and what the music is to A Star is Born are just different to me, so I feel like because Shallow is also, like, such an emotionally resonant part of that movie... And a focal part of that, the actual text of the movie, I think it has a pretty good chance. Yeah, we'll see, John. <laughs> Best original score, Black Panther. This I could see. Black potentially. Klansmen. Black people. If Beale <laughs> Street could oh. talk. <laughs> Isle of uh, Dogs. Isle of Dogs, That's nice. Fun. Mary Poppins Returns. Ooh. Okay, yeah. Ooh, I don't remember any of those songs. I feel like it's either <laughs> Black Panther or Mary Poppins. I, I kind of hope Black Panther could take that, though. Uh, ooh, I heard about Free Solo. I heard that was a crazy-ass yeah. documentary. Yeah. And, um, oh, RBG's a documentary. Yeah, oh, it's, wait a it's minute. the Ruth Bader Ginsburg documentary, which I believe is still playing at one of the museums downtown. So like it's okay. it's made an impact. Oh, that's sure. cool. Yeah. Um that movie on the I'm basis of sex is a fictionalized version. Surprise, won't you be my neighbor and three identical strangers is on here because yeah. 
without a doubt, those were the two I heard the most about <laughs> yeah. all year. Those yeah. two, yeah. I am very surprised as well. I, I'm surprised at least Won't You Be My Neighbor isn't on here. But mm. then again, I haven't seen these other four documentaries. True that. Maybe the Oscars. Or five documentaries. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, um, but I did see Won't You Be My Neighbor, and I loved it. Most mm. important movie I saw. Best animated feature, Ralph Breaks the Internet, Spider-Man and the Spider-Verse, Better Win. Best foreign language film. Wow. Roma again. I would be so happy if it won both, <laughs> even though the, for sure Roma's not on my top 10 list of last year. Yeah. I would be, I would find that very entertaining. Yeah. If it just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. not only is it the best film of the year, but it's also it's the best just the best film movie of yeah. the year in total. No better film yeah. on earth in 2018. <laughs> Uh, oh, and yeah. Netflix goes bankrupt. Uh, <laughs> best sound mixing. Hey, look, there's a first man nomination. Rightfully so. Actually, I, I, I honestly might choose that, or, or I, I mean, I haven't seen Romy yet, but I, uh, first man, I think, has some really impressive technical elements, especially in the sound. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Black Panther, best sound editing. <laughs> I feel like a, a Quiet Place will win this category. You think so? <laughs> Just because of how much the dynamic between sound and not sound played into that movie, and how much it physically touched everybody who saw that movie. Like, everybody who talked about A Quiet Place was like, I've never heard of theaters so quiet. Oh. Whoa. And then the use of sound, too, though. Because the thing is, like, as much as there isn't sound, there's also a lot of strategic sound in that movie. So I feel like it is the most kind of interesting Sonic movie without being in your face with music and all sorts of stuff. I'll meet you halfway. I feel like, I feel like A Quiet Place should win. I don't feel like it will win. Okay, what do you think will? Clearly Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when they kept playing the tracks of Queen, oh, <laughs> come yeah, on! Yeah, that's right. When they when they put on the karaoke, <laughs> they didn't play all of the song. They had to edit it at times. That's true. They did have to cut them down to make them fit the yes. right time of the film, which you know takes a lot of uh, finessing <laughs> to do. <laughs> um, no, I think it would be a toss up between First Man or Roma, honestly. I think that's that's funny that like First Man is such a distinct movie in a lot of ways and it's only been recognized so far for sound <laughs> which is just not the first I, thing i would have thought of when i thought of first man production design uh okay oh ooh, okay first man mary pop and roma black panther okay well i, I guess good... black panther should win i feel like That's i a... feel like it would should win yeah black Pan yeah probably i mean you know mary poppins for traditionalism but yeah i would go with black panther best visual effects all right uh, uh, here we go this is my category crack, right crack, crack. which one has the most effects Avengers Infinity War, <laughs> Christopher Robin, First Man, Ready Player One, Solo. Oh, God. I would be so tickled if Christopher Robin beat all these other <laughs> Like, you know what was most impressive, though? The way that Winnie the Pooh came to life and stole that balloon in the I, train station. I would be happier if... Uh, <laughs> I guess uh, nah, I wouldn't give it to Ready Player One. I mean, I feel like Infinity War arguably should get it. Arguably. I guess Infinity War is the most kind of high caliber visual effects movie on this list that also doesn't. I feel like Ready Player One relies on the CG and so does Solo a lot more than it has like a story under or some kind of gripping drama underneath yeah. it to really make it worthwhile. Whereas Avengers Infinity War has some very prominent CGI that's both impressive and also very much kind of serves the movie beyond just, oh, cool, like a lot of pop culture stuff. Yeah, yeah. We need true. CG for this. Best film editing. Okay. Okay. I, uh, I'm going to give it mm -hmm. to, uh, um, <laughs> you know, honestly, as much as I'm not a fan of this movie, I would give it to Bohemian Rhapsody. And there's some, yeah, there's some nifty editing choices in there. Not because I think it's the best edited movie. <laughs> oh. But because of the crazy shooting experience that movie had with switching directors <laughs> and having to have this all flow and make sense, I'm sure. That's actually good I'm call. sure replacement director and editor were like, let's, let's make this 
fucking work. <laughs> yeah. What do we do? What do we do? <laughs> Most definitely. Yeah, I imagine they're probably in that disposition. That's actually, that's a good call. Um, I but, feel like maybe... But just, I, I feel like personally, Vice would probably win that one. Just judging by, yeah, the big <laughs> short and how kinetic yeah. Yeah. and distinct that movie's editing style was, I would, I would bet. The best animated short. Oh, easily. One small step. <laughs> um, best live action short easily Fove 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 I have loved that Fove love Fove best documentary short oh uh, easily period end of sentence the documentary about Avengers Endgame um, he... that's not what that is <laughs> <laughs> it's the pre-making of what are you talking about it's gonna be the best everyone's uh, seen it alright guys well there you have it the best picture will definitely be going to Roma. <laughs> <This year. laughs> hey, man, you never know. They could surprise you. They could, uh, I don't know. <laughs> the Roma is like such an Oscar movie. And, I've and heard this. Every, every caliber <laughs> that you can imagine, honestly. Okay, okay. It's, it, it, there's a point. It's, you know how I've, I've said before how movies that'll make me cry are the ones that kind of have like layers of like life and mm -hmm. love and then sad like it's layered yeah they've got emotional dynamic there, there, hits a, there hits a point in roma where it's just like oh this is like just so sad <laughs> that as it keeps getting sadder I get less emotional <laughs> because Aww. it's just so sad Yikes. that I'm like I feel like in another movie, I'd probably be crying right about now, uh, but this is just uh, this is just a really depressing film <laughs> for me. Like nonstop, at, at a certain so point, it just sad, gets so I sad. I couldn't even empathize. It <laughs> it's anymore. just because I'm like I'm just so used to it being sad just, that I'm not <laughs> even gonna cry. You know? Damn. Um, oh, I'm excited for this experience. Then. Oh yeah, it's a slow moving slice of life and uh, new wave. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, what do you guys think will win? Better yet, what got snubbed for you? <laughs> Fucking Jake Gyllenhaal for Nightcrawler. <laughs> you know, uh, who else? Who else is the famous snubs? We gotta. Everybody gets snubbed. Every uh, day. well, I, Michael Keaton. I'm going on Golden movie fights this Thursday, and I, I, I haven't gotten my questions for it yet. Mm -mm. I have a feeling one of the questions will be about Oscar snubs. And I know Dan Merle's going to go for Tony Collette for Hereditary. Oh, of course. Yeah. Maybe if I get the questions first. You can <laughs> go with Tony Collette! <laughs> <laughs> so like, oh, I would be... That would, you like, Tony would, Collette, Tony Collette! <laughs> that, that would be such chaos. Yeah. Respond the second you get the questions. Not Tony even Collette, to the don't, other don't, don't, Tony Collette, don't have an option B here, man. <laughs> so, only Tony Collette. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is yeah, uh, Now you can't put out the video until you get the questions. Or, <laughs> or otherwise, he's gonna see, he's gonna watch it. And he's gonna know. <laughs> or I would argue for uh, best director for Star Wars. Born. That would be my biggest one. How can you get? But can you beat Tony? Cole? How can you get three acting nominations, best picture nomination, and somehow not acknowledge the directing of them and best cinematography? This is all the director com composing all of this. Yeah, yeah and if I'm you like, find yourself in all these categories, the director must have done something. The director <laughs> had to orchestrate that entire thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, um, for sure. So, yeah, I would definitely go with uh, A Star is Born for that. Anyhow, yeah, what are, what are the snubs that really upset you? Comment below. Subscribe to the Reject Nation. Click that notification bell. And sayonara. Bye-bye.